This is Eugene Chan, and welcome to Straight Talk. Our guest tonight is Ms. Pullman Lowe. She is Vice Chairman and Managing Director of the Regal Hotels Group, as well as Director of several companies, including Century City International Holdings, a group of five listed companies in Hong Kong. She comes to us with over 20 years of experience in hospitality management, business and property development in Hong Kong and on the mainland. She has been a member of the Hong Kong Tourism Board and is currently a member of the Election Committee in the hotel subsector. So we have invited Ms. Lowe tonight to tell us how the tourism sector is going to survive our current border restrictions. Welcome, Pullman. Good evening, Eugene. Pullman, as you know, the title of the show is how can our tourism mm -hmm. sector survive without the hotel quarantine being lifted? As we all know, I mean, many places of the world has already been opened up and you have seen Europe and US have seen tourist numbers going up. Mm -hmm. And Hong Kong remain one of the few places that still require hotel quarantine on, on entry. Not to mention, if there are airlines coming in with more COVID passengers, they will be banned. Right. So how much longer can we survive under such a situation? Because some say, this is really killing our tourism. Mm. Well, unfortunately, you're right. It is indeed killing the tourism industry. So as you all know, um, we have been affected by um, the 2018 social unrest. Mm -hmm. So the past few years has truly been, been disastrous for Hong mm -hmm. Kong. Mm -hmm. um, last year, we received roughly 90,000 visitors, so that is 97% um, down. Right. And um, just to give you some comparison, back in 2018, we received 65 million visitors. S million. Yeah, 65 million. And in the past two months, guess how many? We only had 9,000 some visitors. Wow. So um, truly, it's been detrimental for the tourism industry, and we, we have all been you know, hanging tight. Yes. Um, and hopefully, we'll see the light at the end of the tunnel soon. Right, Pullman, as you know, business travelers do have very tight schedules and having to mm. spend seven days in the hotel yes. quarantine isn't going to be very attractive, not to mention the potential of flight cancellations as well. So um, the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce, George Leung, has said mm. we, we, lose our, our, uh, we could lose our rival, Singapore. And do you agree? I must say that Hong Kong is indeed... Um you know, being threatened, our competitiveness as a whole. Um, we have lost quite a bit of talent. Um, you know, I think many expatriates in, in particular um, are not very happy with the situation. And also, um, as you say, um, business travelers, unless they have, you know, some um, inevitable activities, they would not be coming to Hong Kong if they have to go through quarantine. However, I must say that this is, is very encouraging that we mm. already have lifted the ban on um, overseas visitors. So starting May 1st, um, non-Hong Kong residents are, are at least allowed to uh, come to Hong mm -hmm. Kong with a seven-day quarantine. So it's a good start. Mm -hmm. So we are encouraged. Right. Pullman, as you know, tourism is one of our major pillars of Hong Kong economy. But in 2018, it accounted like 4.5% of our GDP, mm -hmm. employed like 257,000 people. And as you said, with the low numbers of visitors, yeah. our GDP has, our economy has contracted by 4% by the first quarter. So if we don't open our borders further or with less restrictions, I mean, how much more do you think is going to affect our economy from your point of view? Well, definitely, um, we are seeing signs of um, uh, economic slowdown. Unemployment is skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone is suffering. Um, for the hotel industry, we have had to resort to other means. Um, you know, a lot of hotels are um, promoting staycation and long-stay businesses. Um, of course, uh, our group has been working very closely with the government as we are um, steadfastly supportive of the government's battle against um, COVID. So we were actually the first hotel to, to serve as a holding facility um, for the travelers to wait for their COVID results. And since then, six of our hotels have been serving as quarantine, designated quarantine hotels and uh, community isolation isolation facilities. Um, however, you know, for the whole retail and F&B industry, we've all been uh, badly hit. Um, you know, a lot of restaurants have had to rely on takeaway. So we are all at least encouraged to see that slowly, um, hopefully we will see a comeback of um, 
you know, routine activities. Mr. Pullman, as a member of the election committee, mm -hmm. as you know, we have a new chief executive elect, Mr. John Lee. What type of suggestions will your sector be giving to, to Mr. Lee, especially, as you just said, the, the border closing and also the travel restrictions? I mean, what would you have suggested and, and what is his answer? Um, we have always said that, you know, uh, it's been already a few years. Um, we mm -hmm. started with 2019, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So we are already in the third year. Um, so I think the priority really has to be on um, resuming uh, business and daily activities. Otherwise, we will lose to other cities uh, and countries around the world that are relaxing on restrictions. Having said that, you know, Hong Kong is in a very unique position. I don't think we should be reactive or we should be copying other cities. Rather, we should be proactively taking the role of, um, you know, uh, being uh, a leader, perhaps, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in um, trying out some new s solutions. In mm -hmm. fact, we could even be a pilot test bed for China mm -hmm. um, because, again, we are, uh, we have always played the role of being a strategic window to the world. Um, so I think it's important that uh, we uh, don't just um, reactively uh, resort to, to, to copying other models. Rather, we could perhaps um, leverage on technology. Um, for example, the priority can be placed on allowing um, those you know, with business needs or reuniting with families and obviously mm -hmm. those that have been vaccinated with uh, the booster. So, um, uh, and also, we could also perhaps ask the vendors who are uh, for, for the rapid antigen tests who are all uh, adequately funded to come up with more creative solutions. Mm. I think there are ways to manage the, the virus um, other than just relying on long quarantines. Right. For example, you know, travelers could come to Hong Kong and be required to, to abide by the, the Home Safe app and perhaps upload their um, RIT re results on a daily basis so we could track them. Right. Um, so hopefully, again, the idea is to really encourage travel again. Okay. As you know, Hong Kong is in a very unique position. Mm -hmm. We're at the doorstep to the mainland, and yes. we are adopting a dynamic zero COVID policy compared to the rest of mm -hmm. what we're living with COVID. So if you have a choice to okay. choose between opening the borders to mainland visitors or compared to overseas visitors, what would be your choice? So again, the question is whether it should be mutually exclusive. Again, I think Hong Kong is a strategic window. Um, so given the differences in culture, I don't think Hong Kong is ready to implement the type of lockdown that mm -hmm. Chinese cities are, you know, implementing to, to control COVID to a, a zero, you know, zero COVID state. So since we can never do that, I do believe that perhaps we can be China's window to the world mm -hmm. um, and be more adaptive and more agile in mm -hmm. letting um, visitors right. come to Hong Kong. Having said that, since you know 70% of our travelers um, before COVID came from uh, mainland exactly. China, you know they are definitely um, key to economic right. recovery. So we do have to work very, very hard on reopening the border with China. Right. So let's move move on to the hotel industry where you're at. You know, as you mentioned earlier in the show, mm -hmm. we've been through um, the, 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 the riots in 18 and 19. Yes. Then we have like two years of COVID. Right. Come back to SARS, which was like a few months. This is really like two years. Yes. How much longer can the business survive? I mean, it must be <gasps> tough on you. Because right. as you said, the travel is down by 97, 97 point something percent. Right, right. So we're down with 9,000 travelers out of 300 hotels in Hong Kong. I mean, how can you suspect? I mean, how bad are your books? Sorry to ask. <laughs> so unfortunately, it's very hard to predict uh, when exactly, you know, COVID will come to an end. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll together, you know, work collectively on boosting the vaccine vaccination rate further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, I think, you know, the, the key is to, to remain agile and adaptive. Right. Um, and hopefully we can, you know, uh, find the best balance going yeah. forward. Right. Pullman, you know, we had Mr. Simon Wong, the chairman of Chamber of Food and Culture Industry of Hong Kong, and he mm. said, told us that 2,000, 2,500 restaurants closed, like about 15% of the 17,000 restaurants are closed in Hong Kong. How bad is it, is it with the hotels? I mean, we, very fortunately, we haven't seen any hotel closure. <laughs> um, I mean, how bad is it? 
Well, to be honest, I think uh, in, in Hong Kong, most of the hotel developers uh, and operators do not just have hotels as their core business. Um, and having said that, I think you know most hotel occupancy rates have been badly hit. Mm -hmm. And even when we do manage to um, attract uh, you know, uh, room guests for mm. a whole long stay or mm. or staycation. The profit margin is quite different from what it was before. I'm sure. I'm sure. And also FMB um, with you know dinners suspended till last month, and also mice um, banquet wedding businesses all you know completely wiped out. Mm. It is a very difficult period mm -hmm. for all of us. Right. Last question mm. before the break: um, Being managing all these listed company with hotels, it must have been very tough. I mean, how? I mean, have you lost many staff over the last two years? Can you retain them with such limited businesses, as you just mentioned? Well, um, our staff have been very supportive of the group, and especially since six of our hotels have been um, participating in the, um, the government's uh, designated hotels community isolation scheme, uh, we do actually have to rely on the hard work and commitment okay. of our staff. So, um, so I, I very, I'm very In short, it hasn't been easy. <laughs> it hasn't been easy, but um, I believe that Hong Kong is very resilient. Mm -hmm. um, we are, as a group, have, we have also gone through SARS and actually what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So even back in 2003, for, uh, after SARS, we have actually um, risen stronger than okay. before because we were able to identify right. areas where we could um, perhaps improve our okay. um, cost control and also enhance uh, multitasking of our okay. staff. So I'm very hopeful that you know after COVID, we will actually be stronger than before. All right, we'll have a break and Thank you. see you soon. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. We have been talking with Ms. Bowman Lowe about how the tourism sector has been surviving under the current restrictions. So, Bowman, in the first part, we had talked about the difficulty of the hotel industry and what you have been doing. And I'm sure the viewers want to ask you, I mean, your hotel was designed to be people for leisure, for mm. dinners, for businesses meetings, and to become a quarantine facility. Has it been easy? I mean, is it easy to transform from a hotel now to fit all the criteria mm -hmm. of being the, a, a, a facility like for holding hotel, holding facility or even quarantine hotel? Um, especially at the beginning, it was not easy at all. Um, we were actually the very first hotel to become a holding facility back in March 2020. So that was actually pretty much at the beginning of, of, the, of the pandemic. So in, very naturally, our staff were quite, um, quite worried. Mm -hmm. So we actually did have to spend a bit of time to make sure that everyone is, um, was, was actually ready to take on the challenge. Um, but I must say, you know, I, I feel that all, each and every one of our colleagues, they're heroes. Mm. Um, they have been so selflessly um, uh, devoted to, to fighting the cause. Um, you know, at, at that point, we were not sure what were the consequences, but they still um, stood up for the challenge. So I really applaud them. Mm. Um, we, we did try to provide all the necessary support um, in terms of um, uh, on-the-job training, um, additional hygiene measures, uh, and also provided more um, psychological, emotional counseling, and, also, um, and some additional allowances to, to support our staff and colleagues um, along this fight. Was there any concern from the business point of view that being a hotel of such, such nature will affect the normal core businesses? Indeed. Um, in fact, there were a lot of uh, considerations, uh, which is why I'm sure you know, we uh, were indeed the first hotel. And, and back then, there were a lot of um, worries and anxieties um, that we had to deal with. But um, we felt that you know, we had to play this role. You know, we are not just a business entity. Rather, you know, we have to perform our civic duty to support the government and to be with the people of Hong Kong during this uh, fight. Right, Kuman, we have also looked at some figures of hotel occupancy rate. Of course, it was quite low in the beginning, but after right. doing all that, and even with other hotels that may not be a facility for quarantine, you see the hotel occupancy rate going up. 
and it could be partly due to the long stay packages or even like staycation. Do you see staycation becoming a norm of Hong Kong's people's life uh, even after the, the pandemic? I think it would probably continue to be a part of, um, you know, our, our, our um, perhaps a weekend uh, programs. Mm -hmm. um, but to be honest, it's not easy to provide uh, staycation packages because uh, there's a lot of content that we have to prepare. So um, when you do look at the bottom line, it is not as uh, satisfactory as, as uh, you know, when you serve business travelers who come here for a few days. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I do think, it, you know, um, hospitality is always about taking uh, customer experiences to the next level. So I think this challenge that we've all gone through does um, propel us to be better, to, mm -hmm. to serve our customers better, and not just you know, provide a room, rather it's the holistic experience before, during, and after the stay. Right, Pullman, I just read in the South China Morning Post there mm. was a recent uh, a hotel transaction in Hong Kong by a local buyer, and that means a lot of confidence in the, in the industry. However, if you look at from the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, mm -hmm. they're saying that this uh, pandemic is going to be, have a deep and long-lasting impact, what we call a scarring effect on the global tourism and business travel. Mm -hmm. So what are your outlook for um, traveling and uh, especially tourism in Hong Kong, which is such an important pillar of Hong Kong's economy? I still remain very bullish. Um, you know, uh, I myself were, was in Singapore about two weeks ago, so I can see a huge rebound in, in um, business travel and also tourism. So I think once we get past the COVID challenge, um, there will be tremendous interest in coming back to Hong Kong because after all, we are Asia's world city. Mm -hmm. We are the regional business hub with a lot of strengths to leverage on, you know, including our financial system, we are the trading hub. Um, we have a lot to offer, so mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty optimistic. My Pullman, you being an outstanding st student when you were young, mm -hmm. then you become the 10 outstanding young person of Hong Kong, then 10 outstanding young person of the world. I mean, you, you are one of maybe the only person who has achieved such recognitions. So I think you're the most qualified person mm -hmm. to talk about young people. We often talk about the, the Greater Bay Area, and mm -hmm. especially in tourism. What opportunities are there for young people with this this, this big market right next to Hong Kong? Well, first of all, I think the future belongs to um, those with a global vision, uh, with a broad perspective. Um, so I think, you know, the key to um, being successful in the future is to be able to um, understand and embrace various cultural differences. So I think it's important that we promote a more exchange programs so that our youths can also understand the greater China market. And in terms of the hospitality industry, I think we definitely are strategically positioned to be a regional uh, training hub for the next generation of hospitality professionals. As I'm sure a lot of you would agree, you know, hardware in China is never a problem. We can always get the best designers to build the best facilities. And yet I think Hong Kong um, still has a competitive edge in uh, providing a higher, you know, uh, global level kind of service. Because after all, we are um, the melting pot, the cultural melting pot. So again, I hope that we can serve as that strategic window um, to propel China's development. Right, so you just mentioned that Hong Kong tourism will stand for a good chance for the future um, upcoming uh, when the pandemic ends. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about um, human resources, which is always Hong Kong's major asset, right. we see quite a few expatriates have left in Hong Kong as right. stated in the news and some young people or there may be some more immigration in the mm -hmm. recent months. How has that been affecting your hotel industry's manpower? Has it drained away a lot of your talents or, or your talents are actually made still in Hong Kong? Well, to be honest, I think it has um, affected both uh, talent recruitment as well as retention. Um, in terms of recruitment, um, oftentimes, you know, when we do hire, um, you know, senior management levels, then it's, it's more helpful to actually invite them over and have a face-to-face -face chat. So it's, it's more difficult when there's a quarantine. Um, and in terms of retention, there have been a, a number of, you know, uh, especially middle management um, colleagues who have chosen to left Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I do think, you know, we definitely do need to work on 
strengthening um, you know, our, our competitiveness as, a, as an employer. Right, Pullman, you said you were in Singapore, and I'm sure right. you can feel the vibrancy when everything's oh, yes. open up. So how can Hong Kong be rebranded? Well, I think we have to re-establish our leadership as Asia's world city. Um, we are, after all, the regional business hub, so we have to leverage on you know, our financial strengths. Um, you know, the Sky City developments, um, we do have one of the best airports in the world. Um, and also we have to leverage on, you know, the GBA, uh, all the business opportunities that we can um, create a lot of synergy with. And, um, you know, I think Hong Kong definitely needs, needs to promote innovation, especially uh, in the area of fintech. Um, mm. We can be a strategic bridge connecting Chinese companies to the rest of the world. And when there are, you know, especially new startups, technology companies wanting to penetrate Asia, you know, Hong Kong is still the preferred window to China. Um, and also in terms of ESG um, and impact investing, I think Hong Kong can also play a very strategic role in um, promoting green finance, for example. Right, Pullman, in the last section of the show last year, very quick question. You mentioned technology, fintech, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. I know that your group has started something on the metaverse. Can you yes. just tell the viewers? I mean, a lot of people may not mm -hmm. be very familiar with it. What are you trying to do and how can you link a traditional industry with the technology? So the metaverse in a nutshell is basically the next generation of um, virtual reality that is based on you know, the latest blockchain technologies and immersive media. I personally feel that you know, in 10 years time, everyone will be in metaverse. It will no longer be an option because it will simply um, disrupt each and every facet of life. The reason why we're entering um, metaverse with MetaGreen is because um, sustainability and innovation has always been at the heart of our group's DNA and passionately infused in a lot of our corporate initiatives. So MetaGreen is actually a um, collaborative ecosystem that we're building um, with some like-minded partners who share our vision of building a greener future. So we are actually fostering a sustainable community and promoting circular economy by empowering um, consumers to adopt more sustainable choices, both um, in metaverse as well as in the real world. Does it create much commercial value? Oh yes, it needs to be sustainable. So I believe that it is a triple bottom line investment in that it will help the, you know, the people of Hong Kong by promoting financial inclusion, by promoting eco-friendly choices. Um, it will also definitely help um, accelerate the transition to a net zero future. And also it does uh, hopefully generate profit for our group okay. by allowing us to um, be positioned as a purpose-driven brand and to connect to the younger right. generation. But Pullman, that's all the time we have. We'd love to have you longer. Many thanks to you for sharing your hotel industry's challenges and contingencies during the last two years with the pandemic. Opening off the border with the mainland would be the first step of recovery. Stay healthy and good night. Mm -hmm.